Today we're going to go over the process that you need to follow to perform wheeling maintenance on your 9K axles. First we're going to go over some of the tools that you're going to need to perform that maintenance. We're going to need a torque wrench that goes to at least 150 foot-pounds. We're going to need an inch and 1 16th socket. We're going to need a socket that's in two and a quarter. And we're going to need a socket that's in two and a half. We're going to need a small pry bar. It doesn't necessarily need to be this wider, flatter pry bar. Pretty much any type will work. We're going to need either a small diameter punch, quarter inch, three sixteenths, something like that, or a flathead screwdriver works as well. We're going to need a replacement wheel seal. Anytime that we take the hub off of the spindle, we're going to want to replace this wheel seal. Then we're going to need some cleaning stuff. We're going to either need brake clean. If you have access to a parts washer, that's great, but brake clean works fine as well. We're going to need some high temp grease because we're going to repack our bearings, repack our hub once we have this all built back up. And then you're probably going to want some cleaning supplies, whether that's shop towels or blue paper towels or whatever, just something to clean up once we're done. We're going to need to get through the initial torque on these lug nuts. They've been torqued down. You can see the QC marks on the studs. So at this point we're ready to get the weight off of the tire so that we can remove the tire and wheel. We want to be careful with our jack placement. It's going to depend on whether or not you're loaded. This trailer is obviously empty so going under the axle is fine. If you're loaded heavy, stuck on the side of the road or something, we need to shim it and get the jack up under the frame. We're going to get the tire just enough off the ground that we can remove it from the wheel end. We're going to get ready to remove the tire and wheel, and then we're going to go ahead and take off this axle cap as well. Get our axle cap off. All right, so at this point, we've got our axle cap off. We've got access to our spindle nuts. Now we can get ready to unlock our lock washer and get these nuts off and get the hub removed from the spindle. So our 9K axle wheel end assemblies come equipped with a double jam nut system for the spindle nut. So what we're going to do at this point to get this disassembled, this star washer actually has tabs that are bent down front and back. And what that's going to do is help secure both the adjustment nut and the jam nut to keep those from backing off during operation. So we have to get those tabs bent up and get, out, get them out of our way. And at that point we can take this outer nut off. Jam nut is off and out of the way. That's going to give us access to our star washer. Star washer is off. This inner nut should pretty much be hand tight. You may find that you have to bust it loose with the socket. So now all of the double jam nut system is off. So now we need to get our outer bearing out. And to do that, you're going to find that you're probably going to have to wiggle this hub just a little bit to get it to shoot out it's our outer bearing. And at this point, the hub is free. So the only thing really holding it on is the seal on the seal shoulder and the inner bearing, which will hold it there if you need to let go of it for any reason, get tools, towels, whatever. But at this point, the whole thing will come off. So hub is off, our inner bearing and seal are still secured in the back. Brake assembly looks good. Now we're ready to clean these parts up, inspect them, and then we'll get ready to build this back up. 
So now that we've got all of our wheeling components off of the spindle, now we need to get the spindle cleaned up. We'll get all the grease and stuff off of it so that we can inspect the spindle. But to get this grease off, you just kind of can use whatever's at your disposal. You don't want to use anything that's going to leave any kind of residue in the wheel in. So something like a solvent, like brake clean, shop towels, whether that's a paper towel or an actual towel, doesn't really matter. Go ahead and clean our grease zerg off too while we're here. Okay. So a few things you want to look for on these surfaces. Excessive wear is the big thing. You want to look for any grooving in these axles. If it's grooving more than about 20 thousandths of an inch, the axle probably needs to be replaced. We want to look for any deformation in the, the shape of the spindle. If the nose is down, the nose is up, left or right. Typically you can see it when it deforms one way or another. Heat checking on the bearing journals. You want to look for that, that bluing that you see. You're going to see a little of that even on new axles, but if you notice that these two surfaces are really blue and purple and that pretty iridescent sort of color, that's no good. That spindle has gotten way too hot. Cracks, any other sort of abnormalities on these bearing journals, you're going to want to look for that. They can cause a heat generation in the bearings during operations, make your bearings fail. This, the whole wheel end can lock up, and if it does, the axle gets ruined, so we want to avoid that at all costs. But now that we've got this cleaned, we're gonna go clean our components that we took off of the spindle and we're gonna inspect them as well. So we've got all of our wheeling components laid out over here to the side. So what we need to do at this point is grab your pry bar, smaller one, larger one, whatever works. This wheel seal is trash, don't reuse these. So we're gonna set it over here to the side away from our other components. And at that point we have access to our inner bearing as well. Set it over here with the rest of them. So now we're ready to start cleaning. I'm gonna use some brake clean on these smaller components, like our, our double jam nuts. We'll just spray them down with some brake clean, wipe them off, and then we'll take the bearings over to the parts washer. We'll get them cleaned, get everything back over here, and we'll go through the inspection. We're gonna take a second to inspect all of these components just to make sure there's no abnormal wear, no excessive wear no evidence of heat buildup or anything like that. I'm just gonna start on the outermost component and sort of work my way in. Starting with our jam nut, we're gonna check the inner and outer face. We're gonna make sure that there's no excessive wear there, no grooving, no signs of heat, none of that bluing that we talked about earlier. The washer that rides against the outer bearing, we're gonna make sure the tang is still intact, make sure there's no abnormal wear on the faces, no signs of heat. We're gonna take a look at our star washer Make sure that none of the legs are deformed. Make sure none of them are missing. If we find that, we're gonna to need to go ahead and replace that star washer. You're gonna find that some of these are gonna to need to be replaced over time. Probably every three or four bearing adjustments, you should be fine. The outer bearing itself, will give them a little flex back and forth. It's normal to have a little bit of play, but if you feel like there's, there's so much that you can almost get the cage off of the inner race, that's too much. The bearing's worn out, needs to be replaced. We wanna make sure all of these rollers spin freely. And again, make sure there's no signs of heat buildup on the ID or on any of the rollers. And here we have a new wheel seal. We'll mention again, we threw the old wheel seal away. Anytime you take these hubs down, we wanna replace these with a new, new wheel seal. So we have a new wheel seal. Nothing really to inspect there besides making sure that we have the right part number for the right size axle, the right size hub bore. So the last thing that we're gonna to wanna to inspect is the outer races inside the hub. If you find that these are movable by hand, they need to be replaced. So you need to inspect the hub bore at that point and make sure there's no heat buildup, none of the bluing that we talked about earlier, no cracks, no scars, anything like that. If you find those on the race inside the hub, those are gonna to have to be pressed out. And honestly, if you're seeing that on the race, it's probably best just to buy a whole new bearing set and just replace the whole thing. So at this point, we're ready to start reassembling our wheel end to get everything put back together. But before we do that, we need to pack these bearings with a high temp number two grease. Don't shy away from this grease. The more grease you can get in the bearing, the better. You're not gonna over apply the grease. What we generally recommend is if you'll notice on these bearings, there's a smaller gap on the smaller end of the taper, and then there's a wider gap on the larger side of the taper. It's a whole lot easier to pack grease in through the wider gap. Just have more space to do it. So you're just gonna get you 
a glob of grease. We're going to kind of get it in the general area. And then we're going to mash this grease in the bearing. Like I said, we want to get as much of it in as possible. Just kind of keep an eye on your rollers. You can see how far the grease is traveling up these rollers. We want to make sure that we get it fully packed. This is what's going to help dissipate some of that heat in our wheel end. So this bearing is fully packed. I'm going to give it one more little smear around the ID, just around some of the external surfaces to make sure they get a little coating of it as well. We're going to get ready to install the inner bearing and install our new wheel seal. So the first part of our assembly process is going to be installing our freshly packed inner bearing inside the hub. There's nothing to this step. We're literally just going to set it inside the race first. We're going to make sure that it seats well. We're going to take a look at our grease one last time, make sure that we're comfortable with the amount. This one looks pretty good. It looks like the whole roller assembly is greased, the exterior is greased. At this point, we're going to be ready to put in our wheel seal. The first thing being is that the side of the seal that goes down is important. There's an internal lip design in this seal that's designed to function in a certain way. So you'll notice on your seal it should have oil side on one side and probably air side on the other. You may find that it just has one or the other, but it will be labeled one way or another. So this particular seal has oil side on this face and that's going to go down into the hub, which is going to face the rest of our lubricant. We're going to set it in there as straight as we can get it. The important thing is that when we're done, we want this to be fully seated in the hub and even all the way around. So what I typically do is hold it on one side and then as I rotate around the seal with the hammer, I will rotate my hands behind it, making sure that I don't lose the seat that I just had. Okay, so I can feel inside here between the inner bearing and the seal that the seal is fully seated. So at this point, we're ready to take all of our components back over to the trailer. We'll kind of stage them up around the wheel end and we'll get everything put back together. At this point, we're getting ready to put everything back up on the spindle and do our final bearing adjustment. So the first thing we're gonna do is mount this hub onto the spindle. Like I said, these are a little heavy if you have a little dolly or something, it's helpful, but we'll just do it by hand. It's all the way back, fully seated. Our packed outer bearing. Fully seated in the race. Flat washer next. At this point, we're ready for our adjustment nut. So this nut is the one that we need to get hand tight first. And this is the nut that we're gonna do our bearing adjustment on. So the nut's secured at this point. I can take my other hand off. Nothing's gonna go anywhere. And now we're ready to do our bearing adjustment. And to do that, we're gonna take our torque wrench. We're gonna double check it and make sure that we are adjusted to 50 foot-pounds, and we are. So the first part of the adjustment procedure is just gonna be to torque it to 50 foot-pounds. Okay, so that click tells us that we hit our, our torque goal. And what we're doing with this first torque is we're gonna seat those bearings. We've got them seated, but now we want to back that nut off a quarter turn because at this point, 50 foot-pounds is too tight for a spindle this small. So we're going to back this off a quarter turn. And then from there, it's close. But what we found is you can take the socket and just apply hand tight with the socket. And that's going to put us right about where we need to be to just sort of double check ourselves. We're going to grab this hub, wiggle it back and forth. We don't have any, any play laterally, but it still spins freely. That dragging that you hear is the brake shoe. You're going to hear that on a, on a properly adjusted brake. You're going to hear a little bit of that. But this still spins very freely. No in play back and forth. So now we can move on to our star washer. And this washer's job 
is to make sure that this nut and then our final jam nut don't back off during operation. So we're gonna line our tang up, get that star washer installed. We're gonna to wanna to be in two of these tabs back to the bearing adjustment nut and two of them forward. So at this point we have our star washer seated on the axle. Now we're gonna grab our punch and we're gonna bend two of these tabs back to the adjustment nut. Okay. And obviously this washer is not secured yet. We're just bending these tabs back. They're a little hard to get to once the double jam nut's on. We're gonna start our double jam nut. We're gonna get it hand tight. And then all we need for a final adjustment on that nut is to grab our torque wrench. Again, we're gonna check our adjustment, make sure we're still on 50 foot pounds and we are. So we're gonna put 50 foot pounds on this nut. There's no back off. There's no adjustment procedure on this one. It's just a jam nut. There's our final torque. Wheel end is fully assembled. Bearings are adjusted. We need to get two of our tabs bent forward now. And what I like to do is kind of split the difference. Our tabs that are bent backwards are right around in this area. So what I'm gonna do is actually move over and I'm gonna try to grab some that are, and kind of split the difference and get those tabs out. tabs out. We're going to grab our axle cap and get it started. I'm going to need our larger socket. We don't necessarily need to tighten this axle cap to a certain torque, but what you'll do is you can watch in the gap between the hub face and the, the axle cap itself. And when that O-ring is starting to seat, we just want to snug that O-ring up to the hub face. That's good to go. So we've got the wheel end fully assembled now. Bearings have grease in them, but we're gonna add some grease to the hub as well. These axles are very easy. The axle cap itself has a rubber plug in the center. You can take a flathead screwdriver, work that in, and this cap pops out. And then inside this is a grease cert. So we have a grease gun here. We're gonna add some grease to this wheel end. So we're gonna wanna add enough grease to fill up about half of the sump inside the hub. That's gonna give us a little extra grease in there that as it moves around, moves out of the bearings, there's some more grease to take its place. That'll help with the heat dissipation over the life of the wheel end. At this point, we can take our rubber cap, install it back in. Wheel end is complete. At this point, we're ready to put our tire and wheel back on, put our torque on our lug nuts, and then we'll be done. Now we're ready to mount our tire and wheel back onto our hub. Now this particular trailer has heavy 16 ply tires on them. So again, if you have a dolly, now would be a good time to use it. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna get one stud at exactly 12 o'clock. And I'm gonna get down here and kind of take note of where my wheels and my, where my holes in my wheel are. I'm gonna get one at exactly 12 o'clock, kind of get centered up here. Ready to start our lug nuts. Now that they're all hand tight, I'm actually going to take the socket and just like with any tire and wheel assembly, we're going to want to tighten these in a star pattern just to make sure that the initial seat against the hub is nice and uniform. I'm going to take a socket, 
make sure the wheel is seated against the hub and I'm going to tighten these the rest of the way So I've got all of them about as tight as I can get them, again, using the star pattern to make sure we keep uniformity. But I've got them about as tight as I can get them with this socket. So at this point, we're gonna lower our jack, take our jack out from under the trailer and perform our final torque on these lug nuts. So now we're ready to apply our final torque to these lug nuts. On these 9K axles, we're gonna apply 140 foot-pounds. And again, we're gonna go in our star pattern just to make sure that we apply that torque uniformly across the wheel circle. We're gonna to wanna to check that lug nut torque within the first 50 miles. And on new trailers and new hubs in particular, we're gonna to wanna to be real diligent about checking those lug nuts over the course of the next several thousand miles. So just make it a part of your pre-trip inspection, make it easy, go around, bump them with 140 foot-pounds, you'll be good to go. So that concludes our tutorial on how to tear down and rebuild our 9K axles. If this video didn't answer whatever question you may have, by all means, reach out to our service department. We've got lots of people in there that are willing to help. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you have.